I know, cool, right? So, why does the first crash test dummy get his head taken off with the steering wheel and the second one gets to go home to his crash test dummy family? That's inertia. See, here you go. That's right. Wear your seatbelt. Because of inertia, when you're traveling in a car, objects, including you, resist changes in their motion. When the car hits the wall, it stops, but you don't. You keep on moving. The seatbelt binds you to the car, and the airbag helps, you know, stop what little <laughs> poof there is left. So, yes, even you are a demonstration of inertia. Cars going around a freeway turn, you uh, start getting pulled to the outside. Inertia. Yeah, cool. So, Mr. Tribble, uh, just to make sure you're clear on this one, when you have a, a, a ball or something that's rolling along, why doesn't it keep going? Because remember, on Earth, we have something special. Why do we see objects in motion slowing down and becoming motionless without any outside forces? Because on Earth, there's always outside forces. We have friction and we have gravity. That always happens on Earth. What if we're not on Earth? Well, I've got an example for that later on. But we always have unbalanced forces on Earth. Friction and gravity chief among them. Now, in space, this isn't a concern. If you're out in the middle of space and you throw a ball, it just keeps on going. Inertia. Okay, let's talk about the second law. This one says that force equals mass times acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration. The second law is a big old math problem. You multiply these two, how much mass you have, and how much acceleration you have, and you get force. Mr. Tribble, how the heck does that affect our daily lives? In all sorts of cool ways. Now, the net force of an object is equal to the product of its mass and acceleration. Again, mass times acceleration equals force. But what that means is that if you have two objects, they might fall at the same speed, but one's going to hit with more force than the other. We're measuring with newtons. Um, remember, mass is always in kilograms, uh, acceleration is in meters per second per second, and newtons are your unit of force, but we've talked about newtons already. So let's see here. Which is harder to pick up and throw, a baseball or a refrigerator? No, that's not right. The refrigerator is more difficult. Why is that, Mr. Tribble? because it has more mass. To accelerate it to the same speed takes a lot more force. Okay, easy. Here's another example. We know that objects with different masses accelerate to the ground at the same time. I've shown you all that with the, little, with the metal marble and the styrofoam marble. You drop them, they'll hit the ground at the same time. But they don't hit with the same force. The one with more mass hits with more force. Here you have a 10 kilogram rock, and here you have a 1 kilogram rock. The 10 kilogram rock hits with 10 times more force. It's like you threw a pebble at your friend versus if you threw a baseball at your friend. One is going to hurt more. Also, don't throw baseballs at your friend. Um, now, here's a cool example of this. Uh, Newton's second law in action. You're, this is a video from the moon, actually. And uh, because scientists are awesome, on one of the moon missions, they took a feather and a hammer two objects of radically different weights, but on the moon you don't have to worry about wind resistance and that kind of thing, and you drop them, and let's see what happens. Check this out. 